Hi there. Um, welcome to this video. Um, I'm just going to quickly show Corridor Transitions, the new feature in 2023.2. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because it answers a question that people have been asking me for years now about doing transitional stuff on curb. So I'm going to use the curb tool and show you how you can um, do transitions on on curbs, but also I'll show you the, the other functions as well. Uh, in it. My name is Ian Robinson. I'm the infrastructure consultant here at Grey Tech. Um, I've been doing this over 20 years. I deal with all Autodesk Civil 3D and GIS tools like Map 3D and Infoworks and uh, BIM 360 or a a ACC, um, as well as recap for point clouds and things like that. Everything to do with infrastructure projects basically so it's a very quick video i'm just going to talk to you about these corridor transitions and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to look at these curbs um doing drop curbs i know a lot of you just leave this to qs at the moment uh, and that still may be the case but let's see the tools and then you can make your own decision so we'll just crack straight on with it first things first um we just this is just a, a housing estate and uh, we'll put some drop curbs in here. You can see it's a, a modern housing estate. It should have been built this one. Um, it's in the Wigan data set. If you, you'll know that very well if you've been following any of my videos. Um, and we can see these houses here have got some driveways and we're going to pop some drop curbs in there. I've also got this area set up down here on the left hand side because I just want to show you some extra, extra features. So let's just uh, start off by turning the thing map off. Uh, and we can turn our labels on. Oh, this is a new feature. Uh, I'm not turning this into a new feature video, but just be aware, look, we can turn labels on and off now. If you've got performance issues, turn all your labels off. It'll make a massive difference. There's also this tool here, which is the optimized tool. Um, and what you can do here is, um, if they're all turned on, for example, none of the labels are being drawn that are off the screen. So that 150, if I pan, you'll see, they will not appear. They are appearing though. Why is that? Oh, go in here and redraw them. Redraw label groups and then pan across. And you can see there are no labels now. So the labels don't appear until you finish your panning. Pan around, let go, and then the labels will appear. There they are. You can see them appearing as we go. Okay, so again, it's all about performance, that, so it's just a, a nice little tool in here. Right, first things first, um, if we're going to put a drop curb in here, this is the 3D view of this same model, we need to maintain the back of the curb level. So let's do that first and foremost. Um, we can do that by extracting a feature line from the corridor, and I want to extract the back of the footpath so I'll just get rid of the ones I don't need footpath outside edge I need and the thing here is you need to make sure that you go into the settings and remove the dynamic link to the corridor mainly because if you leave that dynamic link on you can't use it as a target in the corridor because that becomes a circular reference so we need to make sure that's removed if you forget to do that when you go into your corridor targeting it'll just not be in the list just select it go to its properties and you can turn the dynamic link off there as well uh, so let's extract that and then we'll go straight into our corridor and we will set that target for the footpath on the left to target that feature line. Oh, we're going to name the feature line, just call it feature line one. I should have named it properly when I did it. So that's the elevation target. We'll also do the offset target and again, we will name it and hit OK and hit OK and rebuild and nothing will have happened at this stage but what will happen when I drop the curb down so when that curb drops down it will maintain the level at the back of the curb which is obviously how you would do this so the new um, corridor transitions is here if I select that it will ask us to select a baseline so we're going to pick the baseline then it'll ask us to select an assembly just pick it in in the um, in the model you can see when I hover near where the curb is, it's giving me the carriageway uh, as well as the British curb. That's good. You just click and you'll get a list of both. So we want the British curb. And then within that British curb, these are the parameters that we can adjust, these values. Uh, backing clearance or curb face. So I'm picking the curb face. That's what we're going to adjust. 
And it's going to say, where would you like to start? Well, I've written down all these changes, so um, I will just start at 115. And then at 115, it'll be a 0.1 face. And then at 900 mil beyond that, so 115.9, it will be a 0.01 face, a 10 mil face, and it'll be a linear transition. Okay, now if I was to go over and just do this side here, notice we have an assembly at this point. Okay, so this won't work. I'll show you it, we'll do it so it wouldn't work and then I'll, we'll fix it afterwards, okay? So um, I would then go to 125, so 125, and that will be 0 0.01, and then that will be linear, and we'll go to 125.9, that will be 0 0.1. Enter and linear and we'll enter. Now if I apply that, watch what happens in here. Oh, I'm going to go out of command first and then apply that. You'll see it appear up here. There it is. Okay. So that's applied that right the way across there. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, sometimes when I do that, that one will not be included. But it has included in this case. So we'll move on, which is great. Uh, let's go and do the next one. You can just simply right click and add a transition below or above we'll go below and we can just carry on typing away in here or we can just add the transitions and set the values okay um so the value it's first picked is the last one that you ended at but we want to go to 133 so i'll just click in there 133 start value point one and we'll go 133.9 end value 0 0.01 let's add a new one insert transition below and this will be 137 and that will be not point not one again and end chainage 137.9 and that will be 0.1 okay i'll just apply it so you can see it'll appear over here somewhere there it is there's our curve return uh, and we'll do the last one um, again, I find it probably easier just doing it this way. Transition below, and that will be 150 to 150.9, and at 150.9 that'll be 0 0.01, and we'll do another transition below, and that will be 154, 0.1 to 154.9, and that will be 0.1 and we'll just apply that or oh, the graphics I need to improve that but there you go and there's the next uh, drop curb uh, in here you can see that let's change that to realistic there you go you can see the nice drop curb in there and it's maintaining that level at the curb at the back so that's really nice I like that um, I don't know that I'd want to do 300 of them but uh, you know before, if I was saying doing five of them, it would be quite a long job. Um, uh, if you look at the method in my other videos, the previous method of doing this, but that was quite quick, wasn't it, to do three nice drop curbs. Uh, we can use it for all sorts of things though. I'm just gonna um, pan over to this side here. And let's go in uh, here, escape out of that. Go into this one, let's pan to this side here because we've also got these different taper types which are quite nice so let's go and add another group in and we can do it here add a new transition set and it will say select a sub assembly uh, so let's pick our um, carriageway and you can see on that carriageway these are all the different values we can alter we're going to alter the width and there it is and we can then pick um a start station uh, in there so I'm just going to start at say chain is 30. I notice this I know it says station and I'm using the British English version but let's not worry about that so it says what is the parameter at 30 so that's 2.4 okay uh, and then it says select the end station for this transition width so let's go 35 and let's go 3.65 so I'm just going to widen the road on that side like so and there it is okay um, it says do you want to do it by linear all these different types of um, 
uh, transition geometry. We'll just do linear and we can use the table here to adjust that afterwards. So let's go for the next one. So let's say, okay, at chain inch 40, we are currently at 3.65. We'll go linear and then we'll finish that at chain inch 45. Uh, go back to 2.4 and again linear and we'll just enter to finish the command and apply it watch what happens nice so it will add a widening uh, as well so it's a, a, a another method of doing your widenings now while we're at it we can uh, simply adjust these I mentioned all these different types of so bay taper you'll see it'll curve in there now interestingly enough if you don't have lots of assemblies in there it won't actually do anything if there was only no assemblies it will just be a taper no matter what you're saying here the more assemblies in here the more rounded you will get it doesn't add the assemblies afterwards uh, if you're interested the bay taper uh, let's pull it up in the help file always look at your help files tells you everything you need to know about this um, we don't make this stuff up you know uh, so if we look at linear, that's just what it does. And if you do bait taper, it uses this calculation here. Um, and then there's all these other ones here, cubic, cubic out, parabolic in, parabolic out, and reverse parabolic. Um, what does it actually look like? Let's go in here and say cubic in and apply. See, it's very different. And a common one is probably reverse parabolic. So we'll do a curve, then reverse curve. There you go. So there's one curve and a reverse curve, etc. So you can play about with these to your heart's content. Make life a lot easier. Okay, that was it. Told you it was a quick one. Um, a nice, simple uh, demonstration of the new tool. Uh, you know where to get me if you have any questions please just give me a, a shout. Uh, you can contact me via the Great Tech website. Um, and if you need any training or consultancy, well, that's where you go. Thank you very much.